David Robert Lewis was a trailblazer. He graduated in 1894. And if you can imagine, that was just one generation removed from slavery. Purdue University produced its first African-American graduate. And since that time, Purdue University has really grown as an institution, not only in terms of our facilities, but also in our terms of our commitment to diversity. During the late 1960s, many predominantly white campuses throughout the United States began to accept and enroll African-American students in greater numbers, and Purdue was one of those institutions. I started in 1966 as a freshman. I told my father I wanted to be an engineer, and he had the wisdom to uh, introduce me to three African-American engineers. One did go to Purdue, majoring in civil engineering. He shared with me that he could not live on campus. He had to be back across the uh, river by sundown every day back into the black community. But the most interesting thing is he said this as a, in a somewhat of a matter-of-fact way, uh, that he accepted it, and he graduated in four years. So that became motivation to me that every time I felt that the university was too hard or the classes were too difficult, I remembered him and said, well, if he can graduate in four years, you're living on campus, you can go to the library, you can do all the things you need to do in order to finish your degree, what's your problem? And that gave me motivation to continue on when uh, things appeared to be very difficult for me. When they arrived at Purdue University in the late 1960s, it was in the midst of the civil rights movement, so there was not much that was representative of African American history, art, and culture. And the students staged a silent protest and presented a list of demands to the university. And that's how the Black Cultural Center was founded here. A group of six young men from Chicago, Illinois, actually held their meetings here at the Black Cultural Center, the old Black Cultural Center, and decided to start an organization, nationwide organization, to uplift and empower African-American students who are studying engineering. I could see the difference in performance with some of the minority students. The graduation rates were low, the uh, retention rates were low, uh, the actual matriculation rates were low, and there, there were very few students on campus. And as I had an opportunity to visit other campuses, I could see that that, that was a problem that was shared. So when we got back and we kind of talked about what we were going to do about that, we uh, decided that we had a chance to make a difference here. Those experiences gave me the idea of forming the National Society of Black Engineers. All the six of us did was plant a seed, and then we graduated. And others behind us watered that seed, and they, they nurtured that plant, and they grew. Now there's a whole big tree called the National Society of Black Engineers. When I was a student at Purdue back in the late 70s, I was really intimidated by the fact that there just weren't many people that looked like me. And I experienced um, a lot of anxiety about that. And I would go through campus and go to my classes. I always felt alone. And there were times when I just felt, I don't think I can do this. Maybe I should go back home. It wasn't so much academic as it was the social pressure and being isolated. And I remember I went through the civil engineering building and I looked up and there was a picture of this African-American male. And I stared at it and I'm like, oh my God, there's a black person on the wall. Cause you know, everywhere at Purdue, any picture you see traditionally was, was a white person. So I wanted to know who he was and it was David Robert Lewis. And when I saw that he graduated in civil engineering, immediately I began to weep. And I just felt not only did he graduate, but someone put his picture in a prominent place on the wall and I stood there like a kid and just wept. And the energy that I got from just seeing the picture and realizing what he must have gone through in the late 1800s, coming from Greensburg, Indiana. And he survived it. Certainly, if he could survive it, I could. And he should forever be remembered at Purdue.